Welcome to the Green Button Alliance 2020 Annual General Meeting. Our Chairman, Syed Mir. The agenda is here and, and we're going to quickly go through our highlights this year and we've got uh, three sh uh, showcases that, have, um, that we're going to be highlighting and, and acknowledging those and going through uh, strategic topics and some interactive poll and then we're going to also then do a, uh, a look ahead and, and, and open up the, for questions as well. Uh, Jeremy and I are doing our co-host, so we're going to try and make it as interactive as possible. So uh, you can rate us later. I guess we may put that as one of the poll questions, uh, uh, Jeremy. <laughs> I don't know if we want that as a poll question. All right. So uh, <laughs> thank, thank you for joining us. And I'd like to start with um, uh, really a, a moment of silence. Um, I think it's very important for us to recognize uh, what we've been going through with uh, COVID, the wildfires, and the severe weather. Uh, so for the lives lost, I'd like to... Uh, Please join me in a moment of silence. Okay, it's, uh, thank you. Uh, it's been, as I said, uh, 2020 has been uh, quite a year for all of us. And I know we've all know of somebody close that uh, that's been infected by a number of things. So just wanted to open the meeting that way. Thanks, and the next slide there is um, really we had a vision uh, tabled and, and to be the one-stop shop really for where to go for Green Button. And we had three primary drivers, which was really to enhance the NASB standard and, and help uh, with compliance and adoption and demonstrate business value. Um, what I'd like to do is, uh, is to table something uh, that I would call a little bit uh, view of where we should be looking at from a strategic point of view. Mm -hmm. And welcome to all the new members. If they haven't attended AGMs in the past, uh, welcome. And uh, this is our fifth year. And, and we've always tried to introduce something a little different every year from a flavor point of view of what we think we should be focusing on as far as the strategic direction. What I'd like to table to this group is that we really need to uh, promote what I would refer to as energy data value creation. The how part is through green button, through open data access and what we want to do. But the purpose and everybody, I think you see more organizations talking about purpose, right? We're a nonprofit organization. What do we want to do as a purpose? And for us is really to help and, and goal is really to look at what we can do for the ecosystem, energy ecosystem, and the energy ecosystem to include uh, for us, water, electricity, gas, and and anything else that's coming that you would want to steam or anything else that you want to look at. And how do we look at that? And then how do we make sure that we can provide affordable energy? Uh, and how do we look at enabling economic development? And how do we look at it from a, a carbon reduction? And I think going back to and really looking at uh, what's happened even this year, it's even more important, I think, for the whole concept that we've got and it makes me very proud and honored, by the way, to be a chair for Green Button Alliance for the last five years and having the, the, the uh, board members and the members really participating is uh, thank you. And, and I think we are, have a real opportunity now to really look at what's happened with COVID. And you look at what is the number of small businesses that are really suffering and what's going to be happening. And for us, I think we need to give them more solutions and how do we make them, uh, help them move forward on that front. From a, economic, from a DER point of view, from a carbon point of view, we need to really look at what we can do to look at more community solar. How do we make sure that we can have more uh, renewables out there with a different business model, for example, and focusing on more on the carbon reduction that's enabled through us. As an EV owner myself, which is one of the questions, I mean, I don't even know the health of the battery and I own the car. It should be my data. So we need to work at that group as where we see what's happening in the home. And especially when we talk about IT, the world, the, the, it's getting closed. We're hearing and we're seeing that the thermostat, smart thermostat providers that won't give you access to the API. They don't want you to see what the data is. They don't want you to do a set point. So we as a group, as an association, what we have to do is to really make sure that we don't create all these data saddles in the home. And how do we enable that type of thing to make sure we, and we promote that sharing? The end of the day, it's the customer's data. 
we have to be very focused on the customer to get that data. And then so very passionate about the strategic direction that we need to look at. Lastly, I really wanted from an economic development and, and forward and, and is to really talk about our social responsibility. To me, Green Button helps us level the playing field for the people in need to the people who can afford to. We need to be able to provide technology solution for people who have baseboard heating and in our place and where we get hit to and then having to look at that and say, okay, you know what? I can't afford a fancy sophisticated system or whatever technology. How do we make sure that's available? And that's what Green Button is enabled to do is to break down these barriers and make it an even playing field for others to have solutions that they can control and, not, uh, and, and manage their costs. So I just wanted to table that here as being the way we want to ground ourselves in the sense of where we move forward and, uh, and taking it more to the next level and focusing on that. And I will come back and close this off a little bit uh, at the end as well around what, we, uh, what energy data value creation will be going forward. On that note, uh, this is a slide we've got, and I won't spend too much time because everybody will have the slides available to you, but it is about customer choice, it's about secure access, it's about all the uh, different resources, it's all time series data, it's really creating this uh, piece that we want to move to the world where we're not talking about somebody looking at the bill and reacting. We need to look at the part that how do we be proactive? We have to get more current data, more in the hands of the customer, and through app stores or through crossing borders to say, you know what, I want to be able to control my energy use. We have to move past the fact that, you know what, I can't do anything about it. I've got my monthly bill or I've got that bill. I want to look at it on a daily basis and every minute, especially for commercial and industrial. It's very important that we break down the barriers that they can look across utilities, across borders. We need this to happen for our commercial industrial customers. And that will be a focus area on that one. For, um, for this. The next slide is from, this is our little pitch, I guess, uh, for why you should be a GBA member from all different roles. And uh, just highlighted a very few here, just to highlight uh, this table uh, for utilities, munis and co-ops. For us, it's really around customer engagement and what, what we can do to streamline and bring more choices and customers uh, to them. And there's other areas around how to do it efficiently and cost effectively and how do we help and third-party developers, those are the ones that need to be looking at new business opportunities. How do you make sure that you can now deploy and, uh, and bring those solutions uh, to, uh, to, to, more, to the market? And entrepreneurs or startups or even larger companies who've got things to, to, uh, to help the unit cost for everybody. System integrators who play a role in deploying and, and moving out technology can actually have this cookie cutter approach and deploy stuff and, and bring solutions and overall reduce the cost of ownership of, uh, of IT systems. This is what the green button is. It's uh, treated, uh, it should be treated like a development platform. Access to third parties, access to that should be available in everything you do. And then looking at property managers and, and, uh, and small businesses, the key part is you need a common solution to look across properties and facilities where you're getting different bills that span those and to help you benchmark and compare data. And government and commission, uh, commissions are really looking at what they can do to uh, you know, in, open up the, uh, the, uh, the industry and, and not having to have multiple protocols and so forth that we can, we can enable. So this is our green button value propositions and I just wanted to highlight a few of those. And this is a snapshot of our uh, membership, uh, utilities and service providers and affiliates and so a good cross section of, of, of utilities and, and what we're working with. And again, I, I'd like to thank people for uh, the new members that have joined and also for the ones that have renewed. I know Jeremy, you spent a lot of time <laughs> and on this one. Uh, he probably knows everybody by name. They probably everything, everybody must know. Oh, now Jeremy's calling oh, yeah. again. Uh, yeah, they avoid me, yeah. <laughs> So you're, you've got uh, identified. So I, I do want to again thank uh, everybody for, for, uh, for being here and for the new members that are, that are on or, or members that aren't uh, joined us yet. Hopefully uh, you can reach out to Jeremy and his group to, to uh, find out more and hopefully we're helping you here today to, uh, to promote this. And that's one of the reasons we're recording this is to help uh, grow the organization. Yeah, now we want to take a look at the uh, at what we've done last year. Uh, we had an early AGM last year, so 
uh, so there's quite a bit that's happened last year and also into this year because this one's a late AGM. So we wanted to look at what we were doing, kind of a take a self-assessment of these types of things. And so um, uh, this was primarily done uh, just internally to, to get a feel for where we think we are, where we think we need to go. Um, so we thought that maybe uh, Syed and I would just talk about a couple things in here just to uh, kind of clarify our thoughts on, on a few things. Uh, in terms of memberships, of course, we just spoke about that, but um, it, it's important to, to look at where we were with memberships and where we are with memberships. And we're pretty flat in terms of, uh, of members that we've gained as well as members that we've lost. Uh, many people had some financial troubles as we moved into 2020. And so the gains we saw in 19 uh, uh, subdued slightly in, in 2020 early on. Uh, but we did see additional growth of members in 2020, even with this current climate. Um, Syed, what do you think going forward uh, we could venture to expect based on what you've seen? I think there's a few states that we really need to watch out for, and, and in particular, uh, what's happening in New Hampshire, New York, and D.C., or, or, and, and even Ontario recently with their, their announcements and where they're moving forward. I think that's very promising from a uh, a membership point of view that we can uh, look at that. Uh, I think the other part that's going to be really beneficial is if they tie it to GBA certification. Uh, if some of the, of the areas that look at that, I think uh, adding certification is going to be key for us. And I think it's sort of, uh, and if uh, these uh, regulatory bodies point to GBA as a certification uh, piece, I think it will be very helpful for us to, to say, you know, here's a value. Also from a uh, membership point of view, I think it's, it's really going to be, uh, to me, it's, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. And I think we might as well recognize that that's what it's going to be. It's, it's sort of part of uh, being a standards body. It's sometimes my wife said, how can you get extend, uh, excited about a standard? But, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, it's, it's, it's uh, because it's such an underlying thing. It's not something you see visibly. So it's, it's, uh, it's like anything that's, uh, that's uh, foundational. Uh, but for us, is, I think we have um, we got a good group and we need all our members to basically be uh, helping us uh, recruit in a sense or, or identify uh, what we can do from use cases as we need to do to get more members. Mm -hmm. You mentioned certification and it's, uh, as you can see here, our self-assessment of that is that it's a bit lower. We've actually uh, received quite a number of different certifications uh, or applications for them. They've been put into the queue. Um, uh, some of them have already been um, nearly through the process. We're working with several different groups for both DMD as well as CMD. Um, the, the reason that we made a self-assessment to be lower is because we haven't, uh, we haven't achieved what we would like, which is to bring in a lot of the existing implementations, uh, certainly existing DMD implementations of which there are many, uh, and get them up to snuff to meet the 3.3 standards. So those are the kinds of things that we want to focus on. And, um, and we're not sure if that's a push or a pull that's necessary to make that happen with, uh, with utilities that are out there now. Um, but we, uh, we certainly want to focus on that. On the note, and I know you talked about a down, let's talk about a, an up here, uh, something that's trended up, is around the standard piece. I, I think uh, if you maybe, uh, Jeremy, if you can talk a little bit about what GBA staff did and working with NASB and, and everything to move this, uh, the, the standard forward. Absolutely. NASB has been fantastic. Um, Don's going to cover some of this a little bit later about the more intricate pieces of, of what we've done there. But, uh, but the NASB folks, uh, Jonathan and Elizabeth, um, have just been right there, uh, lockstep with us, and, uh, and Cade uh, leading the, um, the, the task force up till now. Uh, it's, just been, it's just been really uh, nice to see that there has been that support. I know it's a different model for them. And so uh, we had some, uh, we had a long delay between the very first in, uh, implementations, uh, but we solved all of that with a, uh, with having um, a memorandum of, of understanding to put into place and working with them very closely. And I think we've accomplished a lot there. The other piece of the puzzle is that we're constantly making changes and modifications within the technical committee uh, of GBA, which is actually an open committee that just happens to be run by GBA, by Don Coffin. 
the Open ADE Task Force. And this is a group that we encourage everybody, members and non-members, to get involved in. Uh, and it is really where the changes and enhancements are set for the standard. So we're excited about what we've done thus far and the, and the enhancements. And again, Don will cover all of that later. Okay. Anything else? I think uh, other than um, global adoption, I guess, is one that uh, might be worthwhile. I think uh, the Korean translation, I guess, uh, NASB's worked out something with uh, to make that happen too. Yeah, they have a uh, they have an MOU in place with uh, with uh, Korean Smart Good Association, and there uh, we'll hopefully we'll hear a little bit from NASB on here and what their assessment is on that progress. I know that it stalled for a little bit due to COVID, but I think we'll have. Um, uh, I think we'll have something soon. Uh, we certainly have a lot going on in that area. Again, I'm, I'm making Don cover all of that and, uh, and talk about all the different groups that we're involved in. And I think, I think you'll find it to be pretty exciting. There's a lot going on in the, in the, in the behind the scenes. Just you're aware for the group as well, we're, we're doing a, 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 what they call a power forward challenge with, uh, with Enercan. And I think somebody from Enercan said on the call as well. Uh, is um, with the UK uh, to demonstrate, uh, uh, you know, more DR uh, promotion of that through a blockchain platform. And, and we're putting in Green Button as part of that to show, demonstrate the value of Green Button across the pond, so to speak, between Canada and the UK. So hopefully next year we'll have some uh, uh, results to share there too. So that would be fantastic. That, I think uh, next slide is, I guess, the. Uh, yeah, a little bit about what we're doing uh, on yeah. the website side of things. We always talk about um, what we're doing physically and in person, but a, a lot of our first touches are with the websites. And so I wanted to take a little bit of a look here because, again, uh, a lot of the 2019 you didn't see and a lot of the early part of 2020 you didn't see because of, of our, uh, our shifting of the meeting. But so what we wanted to do was show you how things are presenting. We really have two main websites. Uh, greenbuttonalliance.org and greenbuttondata.org. Greenbuttondata.org is, is sort of the one that everyone points to, uh, demonstrating exactly where, um, where to go for information. And that's what we've kept it as, as sort of a, an overview, uh, just sort of a, a rundown for anybody who hears about Green Button, whether they're a, a residential customer or whether they're interested in development and so forth. And then from there, we try to bring them to the Alliance site which is uh, something that they don't see quite as, quite as often when you're first getting involved. And that also helps kind of be, uh, become triage for us um, in dealing with questions and so forth, uh, being able to answer some things. They, they, they come to us a little bit more educated. So real quickly, I wanted, to, wanted you to take a peek at the stats uh, that we're showing here. Uh, there are fewer people uh, coming to uh, the greenbuttondata.org site uh, and what we've discovered is they're bypassing it and going more to the Green Button Alliance site, which means that people are already learning about Green Button uh, and going straight for, uh, for, for the detail, which they'll find on the Alliance site. And so we're having a huge increase on the Alliance site and a drop on the data site. Uh, all good things and all, all exactly what we were hoping to accomplish. Uh, you'll also see that for the most part, the percentages of the visitors are the same though we have seen uh, a slight uh, decrease in the U.S. visitors uh, in, um, on the data.org site, uh, but just slight as a 1%, and, and those are being picked up with uh, different countries finding interest in what we're doing. So that's been uh, nice to see. And the Canadian interest also uh, has reduced just slightly on the Alliance site, um, but that again, that's been picked up by, by the others. And these percentages are so small, they're not really uh, very statistically significant, but I just thought I'd point them out uh, just so that we're, we're seeing where things go over time. And then when you look at what people are interested in, uh, on the Alliance site, you'll see that they're interested primarily in learning about the GBA. Uh, there's a lot on that page, and uh, from there they can go to a lot of other, other places. Testing certification and how to join the GBA are, are second in line uh, behind the about section, which is really exciting to see because certification, of course, is, is truly important if we're going to have interoperability. And then how to join the GBA, of course, uh, brings in membership. So we're excited about that. 
Uh, on the data side, you'll see that the residential interest is the majority. And that's what we were hoping for on this site in the first place, because that's where folks have, have come and they've heard about Green Button, but they don't understand what it is. And so this gives them enough education that they don't have to come to the Alliance site to learn about, uh, about the minutia of, of those types of things. They can learn about it right on the data site. So we want to increase the amount of of uh, educational material that we provide them, videos, other types of things on that site to help them. Uh, and then the, re the developer interest has peaked up a little bit. And we also put in a, a new section about connect my data so that uh, folks there can learn about that right away. And that's already gained as uh, nearly as much interest as the developer interest. So we're quite excited about that. Um, all of this culminates, of course, in us trying to uh, trying to drive the value of the organization. Uh, and that value is driven from our board of directors primarily uh, through our membership, of course. Uh, but we need membership, general membership representation at the board. And so one of the things that we do each uh, year is we have an election of the participating members to be a part of the board. And so uh, this year, like, like others, uh, we had our election. It's all online. If you didn't hear about it, uh, you are probably a sponsor or you're an observing member or you're uh, uh, an, a special affiliate, uh, like an organization or a government. Uh, because it's only open to the participating members for the participating members. And so nobody knows who the candidates are. Uh, nobody knows how the election is going until this exact moment right here. When, uh, when we introduce to you uh, the, uh, the elected members uh, to the board for the 2021 year. And I would like to give uh, congratulations to Jay Lewis, John Anderson, and Jeff Hendler. I'm going to put each of them on the spot to, uh, to just say a quick blurb about what they're hoping to uh, do on the board. Uh, and in one case, you'll, you'll find that John is already on the board. Uh, and so, uh, uh, without further ado, I will hand the microphone, so to speak, over to Jay Lewis. First, thank you, Jeremy, uh, and, and thank you to the, the members uh, for the, the election. Looking forward to it. I think um, UNCIA hit it early. Um, getting the standard, I think, will facilitate in innovation. So I'm excited. I think um, what we've seen when you have a, a standard, it allows the, the creativity to come a little faster as folks can build uh, and know uh, how to plan a roadmap. So part of, uh, you know, why I'm excited to, to, to be on the board and help further the mission is to accelerate that, that pace of, of, of standards, getting more organizations on board uh, so it can increase the, the pace of innovation that, um, that we're seeing here. Yeah, we're really excited to have you as a part of the board. Um, you have not been on the board before, and I know that uh, uh, people will, will love your ideas. Uh, I, you and I have spoken in the, uh, in the recent past here, and, um, and we're thrilled to have you. Uh, Jay's going to be holding the two-year seat, as you see here on the slide, and um, uh, so we'll be seeing a lot of him over the, over the next two years. Uh, John, we've seen quite a bit of. Uh, John, uh, tell us what your goals are for this year. Thanks, Jeremy, and, and thanks everybody else. It's a pleasure and privilege to be continuing on in this capacity with the, the Green Button Alliance Board. Um, for those of you not familiar with OwnConnect, we are a demand response provider based in California. We service primarily residential customers. We have over 100,000 customers now signed up participating in demand response directly in the California ISO market. In our experience, of course, access to interval Customer data is essential to animate this business, but one of the trickiest parts of the puzzle is getting customers to go through the authorization process in the first place. For many people, it's, it's daunting, it's not user-friendly, it's off-putting, and you may not be surprised to hear that we, we continue to lose a lot of customers between the step where they sign up for an Unconnect account and when they're required to authorize access to their data. So over the past several years, we fought very hard in California to get a more streamlined and user-friendly process for uh, customer authentication and data authorization. Our hope is that some of these lessons from California can be uh, adapted in other states and in jurisdictions beyond to make sure that yes, we're protecting customer privacy and uh, providing state-of-the-art data security, but also making the process for customers to share their data with entities that can provide them value as easy as possible. 
So we look very much forward to continuing that work with this group. Thanks, John. And it's been a pleasure having you uh, thus far on the board. John also serves as our secretary, uh, one of the officers of our board. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's great because he, he's part of the executive committee and, uh, and helps drive uh, the little minutia uh, things that we have to deal with within the organization. And, uh, and it's really extremely helpful to have that team. Uh, now, uh, Jeff Handler uh, from Logical Buildings. Jeff? Well, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, really honor and privilege to be part of the board, and I look forward to working with John and James Jay as well. And, uh, you know, Logical Buildings, we're a smart building technology company, and, uh, you know, integral to our product and service, because we make a business case out of green button data. And so we hope to be someone of a, an evangelist to utilities. Um, to any, any regulatory authority of, of how having access, consumers having access to their meter data in a, a way that is open for them to utilize or is open to have programs where third-party developers can make that data much more meaningful um, is going to go a long way to help uh, homeowners manage their home in terms of energy and sustainability. Um, but also there's, there's just a lot of you know, programs that each state has, or even on the federal level, that are driving for renewables, driving for more solar, more EV charging. Um, and really, to make all those programs truly successful, you really need to have AMI data um, accessible to be able to measure and manage and balance the needs of the grid. So, you know, happy to be a part of uh, the team and being able to provide some really good um, use, business case uh, case studies uh, for, for the group and, and for future members and future organizations that hopefully will join, join on with us. That's great, Jeff. Thank you. And we'll, we'll be hearing from Jeff again uh, a little bit later, uh, giving us a showcase on uh, some of the things he's doing and how he's doing them. So we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, Syed, on to, uh, on to you. I just want to acknowledge the, the board members and in particular the, you know, Daniel, the vice chair and Jenison for the treasurer and John for the secretary and that uh, you're, you're appreciate you being involved in the executive team and, and uh, bringing a lot of your thought leadership and, and for the rest of the board as well, that when we do meet and uh, Bill, Bill, I guess uh, at this point is uh, we thank you for Bill Fisher. He's from EEI, and and I think and is Bill on the call. I think he's. Uh, I think he is. Yeah, he is. I want to really thank you from our side that uh, we would have liked you for a third year, but our bylaws didn't allow it. So <laughs> unless we change it, but uh, uh, thank you for your uh, your representation and, and and participation, and likewise for uh, David Willen, who's there from NIST. Uh, I think is um, we want to thank him for all the NIST grants, by the way. Uh, thank you very much. It's uh, very appreciated. And um, and the ministry staff uh, on uh, as well from Ontario Ministry and and uh, and the Department of Energy. I know Chris uh, Urban's uh, attended, and then we've got some of the new members there now. And also we have Enbridge uh, the Gas Company in, in Ontario. Thank you for your sponsorship. And I don't know if Tracy's on the call, but or somebody from Enbridge would like to pass on our thank yous to them as well. And we really appreciate it. All right, so. Uh, as I said, we're going to hear from Jeff uh, again, and so uh, Jeff, if you uh, if you want, I will be running some slides here. If you want to go on video as well, we'll tack that in at different points of your presentation in our final recorded uh, and uh, YouTubed version of this. So, uh, sure. without further delay, here we go, uh, Jeff from Logical Buildings. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, so. Logical Buildings, we are a member of Degree Button and now uh, a board member as well. So really excited about that. We are a sustainability smart building software company. Uh, we are an integrator. We integrate utility smart meters with IoT platforms. We do not create our own hardware. We use existing BMS systems or new generation IoT, which is every day there's a new sensor out there. And uh, we figure out how that sensor might be a value to a building. So we, we've created a configurable um, product that uh, is bespoke to buildings. And now in this year, in 2020, we've rolled out 
aversion for the home as well, an apartment or condo. Uh, we started in multifamily. Uh, that's where we cut our teeth with our technology. It gave us a really interesting view of a, a hybrid of a, of a smart city because a high-rise multifamily building has a combination of a city. You have you know, a few hundred people living there, if not more. Uh, you have common areas that are very com like a commercial building. You have at the street level, uh, you know, retail, you know, restaurants, banks, laundromats. You have parking, you have EV charging facilities. You know, we have buildings that have 400 spaces and they might have 10 to 15 EV charging. So, you know, over the years, we've learned a lot about the whole ecosystem that the multifamily building exposed us to and really gave us a lot of insights of how to um, build a platform that would be really valuable um, to that community. And that's actually propelled us into pure commercial, pure residential, mixed use and all other industrial as well. We, we have a formula for what we think is for in our success. And we think it's a, it's a general formula for the market. Um, it's our like E equals MC squared of AMI plus IOT minus CO2 equals a lot of value, a lot of value for everybody. Um, the AMI is really a theme of uh, decentralization um, in the energy markets. What's happening behind the meter um, in terms of what's dispatchable load is much more important than what's happening in front of the meter of centralized load. That's where the migration is going with renewables. And therefore that AMI data um, becomes more and more valuable and more and more utilities are implementing AMI uh, smart meters and therefore having a green button uh, type of construct of standards opens up value for everybody. Um, and that's you know, a, a concept that we, you know, hopefully having this uh, board seat will be able to you know, amplify that theme taking that AMI data, integrating it with IoT. That's the digitization that everybody's talking about. That, you know, we're in new era of 5G, of device-device uh, communication. Um, taking that information and integrating it with the AMI data, the green button, um, incredibly valuable in A, creating AI. We have an AI platform, being predictive, being prescriptive on what you should do uh, in a building. And, and then, you know, I, IOT for its own sense, that's, you know, smart thermostats, like as, as an easy example of an IOT device has become ubiquitous. And again, you know, being able to calibrate that with uh, meter data, very valuable to the homeowner or to a business owner, a building manager. All the combination of those two drive energy reduction and also drive the reduction of carbon and being able to calibrate that and understand like one of the most intense carbon time of day um, when you have that type of information and we've created a, a metric of carbon intensity uh, that we're able to expose to our end users to create this value. We've also seen since we started in multifamily, the, the other three letter acronym of WFH, work, working from home, like all of us, many of us, are working from home. And that's had like a, a real uh, impact on utility distribution networks and, and transmission networks um, that we've seen, especially going through this past summer, incredibly hot summer nationally. Uh, and, and by having that data through green button, uh, we're able to you know, report back to the utility or, and we also happen to be a, a demand response uh, aggregator provider to offer relief in areas that, that was never there before. And it's just a quick example, I don't take up too much time, but in New York this past summer, all the, the extreme constraints were in areas they never experienced before, the outer boroughs of New York City, because the, the, the working centers of Manhattan were vacant. And so Manhattan, which typically would have demand response events, did not. And the outer boroughs like Brooklyn, Queens, Westchester, Staten Island, they'll ex experience extreme constraints. And having this, this type of data um, was really valuable to homeowners who were able to participate in what we've created through Green Button, Share My Data, a product called Grid Rewards. 
where homeowners would get a demand response alert, we would get that as an aggregator. We translate that into grid rewards, which is basically an event notification with prescriptive things the homeowner can do because now that homeowner Con Ed has rolled out an AMI meter. Um, they're halfway through a 5.5 million AMI meter rollout is over 3 million AMI meters. We have a technology integration cloud, the cloud with Con Ed, again, through share my data, green button construct. And we've created you know, value. Um, and we've been able to take that data, not only translate that into providing grid relief, but also to point out to homeowners how they could just be more intelligent with their energy management. And also point out to homeowners, you know, what are the most carbon intense hours of the day? You know, having green button data down to the hour and down to 15 minutes really uncovers a lot of uh, opportunity to see what's your true carbon footprint for your home on a time of use basis. So, you know, a lot of value in this equation. Each one is its own independent trend and integrating it um, has, has been really worthwhile. I don't spend too much time here. We'll have this deck, uh, you know, uh, posted, but, you know, there's nothing better than hearing from your own people, you, you know, your clientele, so to speak. One thing worth, worth focusing on, though, is uh, with this new product called Grid Rewards uh, that we've just rolled out, uh, we've, we've had a big sign up of a CCA, a, a, a community choice aggregation. The largest CCA in New York is called Sustainable Westchester. And Sustainable Westchester would represent 120,000 members. Um, you know, again, it's, it's a combination of mostly residential, but also has businesses as well. And they're going into this year now enabled to see their, their green button data through our platform and have now this prescriptive and predictive analytics, you know, literally, you know, in the palm of their hand or on, on their screen. Uh, and what we found this past summer, which was our first summer, you know, enabling grid rewards, is that what we thought would be the interaction turned out to be 200% more than our own, our own projection. Meaning if we thought someone was gonna reduce their load by one KW, two KW, they did double that. And it was really fascinating. And what we learned is that it's part of the IoT phenomenon that people have in their own homes. They've chosen a device, whether it's Alexa, whether it's Google Home, whether it's you know, smart things, you know, whether it's your, your broadband provider of say Verizon or Comcast or Cox, whoever it might be, they're providing you devices that enable you to literally talk to your home. So people are working from home, they get a grid rewards alert and they say, hey, you know, Alexa, change my set point to my thermostat by three degrees. And Alexa does it, and, that, and they didn't have to move, you know? It, it's becoming that simple. And we don't even need to integrate with the thermostat. It's already there. It's already at their fingertips. They have that app already. So, you know, being able to take the AMI data and, and integrate that into the experience of IoT with a homeowner or a business, which we're now doing with Westchester and Community Choice Aggregation, all that was made possible is there's a, there is a share my data green button program. And there's nothing greater than a use case for that. And we're out there, you know, talking to the New York um, State Public Service Commission, you know, explaining to them, you did a good job. They need to hear that. You did a good job, you know, okaying that rate case for Con Ed to roll out those AMI meters. There's a lot of utilities need to hear the good press about having AMI data of green button data. You know, we have different products like Smart Kit AI is the intelligence, the AI that building managers use. We have a, a consumerized version, same Smart Kit AI brain um, that's running grid rewards. And we also have for portfolio owners, the ability to manage their commodity risk as well in those markets where they need to choose suppliers as well. It's data driven. We cracked a code. Um, that, cr that code is crackable, so to speak, by having the data. And so when you have, you know, green button data and, and, and asking now, not just, our, you know, daily data, but hourly data or, or 15 minute data, uh, the more granular you get, the more valuable it is. And as there's a push state by state, country by country for distributive energy resources, having green button data 
is that much more valuable. We work with, you know, sustainability consultants, you know, BMS companies, um, big energy suppliers like Constellation, uh, you know, all, all sorts of, of players. Uh, we, we, we're collaborative with, we find our place and niche within, uh, you know, their, their ecosystem. And bottom line is since it's all data driven, we're able to deliver measurable results, uh, you know, creating, you know, revenue and cost reduction as well. Thanks, Jeff. That's excellent. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that with us. I appreciate that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about data access policy advancements next here. Um, and we're going to be uh, our, our GBA treasurer uh, from NG, uh, Genghis Enyanarum, will be covering that for us for the U.S. And then Matt Edwards will talk uh, from the Ontario Ministry of Energy, Northern Development and Mines on uh, what's happening in Ontario, Canada. Uh, so, Jengison, first and foremost, you are up to bat. So, uh, first and foremost, I wanted to um, thank everyone who took the time out of their busy daily schedule to be here and share our excitement. I wish, of course, we would be doing this in person as it would have uh, highlighted how much uh, in this initiative has grown over the past five years. But, of course, given the circumstances, we'll have to live with a virtual lag uh, together. So maybe a, a, a quick word about what I do and a few words to introduce Angie, uh, who has been a long-standing supporter of, uh, of the Green Button Alliance. Uh, as Jeremy mentioned, my name is Cengiz Sanginerim, and apart from being an officer here at the Green Button Alliance, I currently have a couple of responsibilities within Angie. I act as the head of uh, Central Portfolio Management for our commercial business, and also I'm slowly transitioning actually to a new role which is uh, being the chief data officer for, uh, for our uh, North American organization. So, um, Angie's ambitions in, in North America uh, and worldwide for that matter is to be the leader in zero carbon transition services. That's of course happening in a variety of ways, which I will not get into. Uh, I mean, of course we start from putting, you know, you know, putting renewable generation resources on the ground. It goes all the way into working with our clients to reduce their carbon footprint through reduced consumption, energy efficiency, and other digital and decentralized solutions. What's more important, I think, is why we support Green Button and why we see it as an important pillar. Uh, it will also probably take too long to explain, but maybe to provide some context, what we try to do, we cannot do by just pushing uh, ourselves. This, this business model that we have would not be possible if there wasn't a pool from our customers. Successful in answering and answering this demand, and as any other business that faces customers, we do realize that data is really the lifeline for our business, so that we can understand our customers' behavior, their priorities, and objectives. Um, open access to data is foundational to uh, not only just green organization but also to our business because it supports and intersects with Angie's goals on on climate and social responsibility. Looking into the U.S., the availability and accessibility of, of consumption data, or, or lack thereof, rather, uh, we felt we needed to do more than just watching the regulatory initiatives unfold. So um, that, that's why we, we have supported Green Button, and we thought it is important for us to share the regulatory developments around the country with our audience today, as it's also an important strategic pillar for, for science itself as well. So uh, we have the map on the on the screen. Um, we currently have existing energy data mandates in, in five states. These are California, Colorado, Illinois, New York, and Texas. I wanted to highlight, though, um, our work is far from these states. Um, I think this goes back to what, what John was talking about uh, in a little bit. Really, having a policy in place is, is, is something, but if it's not implemented the right way with the with the customer and simplistic design in mind, for they, they will not succeed. Um, John mentioned about California, and I can talk about since I live in Houston, the first iteration here in Texas. Uh, what we even now have in Illinois, uh, I think are, are great examples of, of what I'm talking about. Maybe an analogy to go here, and I saw Bob uh, was on, on the call as well here today. This is actually his, his analogy, so I'll, with his permission, I'll talk about it. So. When I go to an ATM, irrespective of where I am in the tree, uh, whichever bank I go to, you know, my debit card works. I can use my PIN, 
financial information is exchanged in the background and I can get my money within seconds. I can go to any big box retail store. Uh, I can walk away with a TV, you know, punch my social at the checkout register and set TV right then and there. It takes seconds. That level of standardization, simplicity, unfortunately, doesn't exist in our, in our industry. And, and that's, that's what we should be targeting when we implement these changes. Policy is just one thing, but uh, you know, having DMD or CMD in place is one thing, but the design and the customer experience should mimic that kind of approach that currently exists in the financial industry. And, and that's what we lack in the utility industry. So the reason I deviated from, from the map and initiatives is, uh, I mean, to explain this is, is it's really great actually to see more and more states and utility commission realize the same thing. And they're taking slow but uh, you know sure steps towards implementing this kind of approach so there is an emerging interest in wide data platforms that make it easier for the customer to uh, to not only acquire but also their data and maybe that, that's why I, I wanted to really highlight uh, the developments in in certain states uh, i think new york new hampshire uh, dc there i think they exemplify a good approach and also even, uh, you know, what's going on in California, of course, with the, with the secondary iterations in Texas, uh, those are also good examples as well. So, but, but maybe to expand a little bit on these three new states, uh, in, in DC, the Public Service Commission uh, announced the approval of uh, the next set of grid modernization recommendations for, for DC, uh, stemming from its, uh, I think it was called Power Path, uh, stakeholder process. Uh, these recommendations include enhancing energy data access uh, for not only just CNI customers, but also for all residential customers through PEPCO's Green Button Connect My Data platform. Uh, and also many comments were filed uh, have a single repository for customer data as well. Um, in New York, DPS staff published two white papers on strategic use of energy-related data. Uh, the first one uh, was regarding the development of a data access framework. Uh, it defines the process for access to energy-related data. It recognizes that uh, uh, the owner of the data is the customer and they have the right to consent to share their energy usage data. And it standardizes the necessary privacy, cybersecurity, uh, and, and quality requirements for data access. The second paper, which I think is a little bit more exciting, uh, regarding the creation of an integrated energy data resource. And it proposes a statewide centralized platform for access to customer and system data. Um, stakeholders are providing comments for consideration by the DPS. And if it's adopted by the commission, the data access framework would guide the requirements and process for energy, uh, for access to energy related data in New York and through a, through a single repository, which I think is very important. Uh, similar in New Hampshire, uh, legislation has passed uh, for a statewide platform, which even highlighted a certifiable solution involving uh, Connect My Data uh, and should be pursued. So obviously, I cannot get into details due to time constraints, but also, uh, as highlighted by the map, other states are pursuing similar outcomes. We have Hawaii, we have Arkansas, Ohio, New Jersey, Massachusetts, North Carolina. They're all highlighted here on the slide. Finally, maybe to highlight uh, on a national level, the, the E-Access Act as part of the nine bill uh, climate action plan has been proposed to the House of Representatives. Of course, these things, these things take time. Uh, it can swing a bit uh, depending on politics, of course. But what's important, I think, is the overall direction. And it suggests that we are we're turning around this really. Um, even in uh, direct contact with, uh, it was mentioned with Republic of Korea, with utilities in, in Europe, Australia, to explore whether even this that can be implemented elsewhere outside of the US as well. So to conclude, I think it's, it's fair to say that we have come a long way in the past five years and now is probably the most exciting time of all due to the, the rapid acceleration of policy initiatives around the globe. And I, I do hope we can continue to take part in these initiatives with a bigger and bigger group and the right thing, not only for economic impacts. I, I applaud Syed for, for the amount of silence because we're not just doing this for the economic impacts, we're doing this for the people and for the planet. Uh, that is why also NG is, is supporting this so strongly because the, the purpose intersects with all our three global uh, strategic trusts as well, which are planet and, and, and profit. 
So as, as you might have noticed, I did not get into any details regarding Canada um, because I think we have Matt Edwards here from uh, Ontario, Ministry of Energy, and he'll go through updates uh, on, on, on Canada next. Uh, so I want to thank you again for, for being here and uh, celebrating with us our fifth year anniversary. So, Matt? Um, well, good afternoon, everyone. And thanks to Jeremy, Syed, and the uh, GBA team for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Matt Edwards, and I'm a senior policy advisor uh, with the Conservation and Energy Efficiency Branch uh, of the Ontario Ministry of Energy, Northern Development and Mines, or ENDM uh, for short. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to quickly provide you uh, with a brief overview of Ontario's experience with Green Button to date, and update you on a number of exciting developments that have recently taken place. Uh, the province of Ontario is the largest subnational government in Canada, and ENDM works to provide to develop a safe, reliable, and affordable energy supply across the province uh, for Ontario's approximately 14.5 million residents. Uh, these residents are served by approximately 59 electricity distribution companies, uh, the primary natural gas distributor, Enbridge Gas, and a large number of municipally operated water distribution services. ENDM uh, has been a long-term member of uh, the GBA and has been represented on the board as well. Uh, my boss, Usman, uh, you may be more familiar with him. Uh, he unfortunately had a conflict today, uh, but he says hello to everyone and uh, hopes you're all well. Um, since 2012, the adoption of uh, the Green Button Standard in Ontario has been voluntary for utilities, and this option has been incorporated into provincial legislation in recognition of the benefits that a single standard can provide. Uh, these legislative changes were also made uh, in recognition of the opportunity that was presented with the province-wide rollout of electricity smart meters in Ontario and the capabilities that were unlocked by this technology. Initial uptake in the standard in Ontario uh, was modest at first, uh, but ENDM has taken a leadership role in advancing the standard in the province. Uh, in 2013-14, ENDM ran an app contest to help showcase some of the capabilities of Green Button, and a great deal of information was collected through this exercise. London Hydro has been a key leader uh, for Green Button in Ontario uh, in advancing the standard and has uh, retained this status uh, in part through the development of a platform that other Ontario utilities have leveraged to roll out the standard to their customers. Um, ENDM has previously proposed uh, the Green Button DMD and CMD would be required for Ontario electricity and natural gas distributors. And that was as recently as in 2016-17. Uh, however, to date, the ministry has, has taken a measured approach to this implementation as we have worked to ensure uh, that the standard is ready for all Ontario utilities to implement. Over the years, ENDM has been engaged with NASB and the GBA uh, to advance the standard and understand how it can be applied to the Ontario context. We believe that the current status of the standard and the GBA certification process, uh, there's an opportunity that exists to require that the standard be implemented across the province. Uh, the ministry currently has the legislative authority uh, in our Electricity Act to develop a regulation uh, that would require a data, data standard be, to be implemented, such as Green Button. Uh, the current government has recently communicated uh, the opportunities that Green Button presents in a number of publications. Uh, this includes uh, the province of Ontario's environment plan, uh, which was released in 2018. Uh, there was an open for business publication released by our Ministry of Economic Development uh, in 2019 that highlighted progress on Green Button. Uh, and most recently, a uh, communications document that you see up on the screen uh, was released along with a legislative package entitled uh, Making Ontario Better uh, for People and Smarter for Business. Uh, while this package does not include specific legislative, legislative amendments related to Green Button, uh, Green Button was included as an existing initiative uh, that can help meet the goals of this package. Uh, on October 8th, uh, in coordination with the re release of this package, uh, ENDM posted a regulatory proposal uh, to require utilities to implement Green Button uh, to what is known as the Environmental Registry of Ontario and the Regulatory Registry. And these are tools that the province of Ontario uses uh, to consult with the public and stakeholders on proposed regulatory amendments um, that may have an impact on uh, the environment and uh, built world. Um, so this posting proposes 
uh, that Ontario's electricity and natural gas distributors uh, would be required to implement and certify uh, both Green Button DMD and CMD within two years of the enactment of the regulation. Uh, they would have the option to implement the standard themselves uh, or work with an existing provider that currently has the capabilities uh, to implement the standard on their behalf. Uh, and of note, and something that we're specifically looking into, uh, is that while Ontario's uh, largest electricity utility, which is Hydro One, uh, serves over 1 million customers, uh, many utilities serve fewer than five to 10,000 customers. Uh, so there's quite a large uh, difference in the scale of utilities that, are, that operate in the province. And something that we're specifically looking for feedback on uh, is how implementation costs for these smaller utilities uh, could be reduced uh, and to make it as easy as possible uh, and as economically viable uh, for them to implement the standard uh, if it is required for them. Um, the, po the posting also speaks to some of the benefits the green button can bring uh, to Ontario energy consumers and utilities across the province, um, which helps to form the ministry's vision of green button in Ontario. Uh, the ministry expects that providing uh, easy, secure access to data through Green Button can create a competitive market for platforms to deliver this data and a suite of applications that can enable consumers to control their energy use and costs. Uh, further, Green Button presents an economic op development opportunity uh, while supporting increased conservation and energy efficiency. Uh, this can provide direct benefits to customers who can receive information on how they can save on their energy bills uh, through changes in consumption patterns or retrofits and can help uti utilities connect with their consumers in an efficient manner. Uh, if you're interested in looking at this posting, um, you can find it simply by searching, uh, at least I did Google, uh, it may show up differently in other search engines, but uh, if you Google ERO Ontario Green Button, uh, it's, it should be the first posting that comes up. Um, or if you go to the uh, Environmental Registry of Ontario and search Green Button, there's you can find the posting there as well. And the, the, the comment period uh, is from October 8th to November 22nd. Um, so there is still approximately a month um, for this posting period if you were interested in uh, posting, um, because uh, from the ministry's perspective, uh, we would welcome any advice uh, or feedback from GBA members uh, regarding uh, implementation or other considerations um, that can be provided, uh, even if you do not operate in Ontario. Uh, so because once the posting closes, uh, the ministry will take in all this feedback uh, and will uh, make a decision or make, make a proposal or make a recommendation uh, to uh, the, the politicians who uh, would be the ones authorizing uh, the regulation and we would propose some next steps at that point as well. Um, so I think that's all that I really prepared for you today. So uh, thank you very much once again for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, and I really do hope that uh, you and your families, colleagues, uh, remain safe and healthy uh, during this uh, this time that we're in right now. Great. Thank you, Matt, for, great. for a lot of uh, for for quite a detailed uh, uh, description of uh, the role that uh, Ontario has played on and Ministry has played on the Green Button Alliance for the last uh, few years. So, yeah, we really appreciated it. And and I, I some of the questions that came in into the chat, uh, we're asking how they can find some of these links and. Um, we have on our website uh, a menu called Happenings. And if you hover over that menu, you should find links. And we constantly update these links with the latest and greatest uh, of information to find, so that you can find the right places. Um, but uh, hopefully those will help you find some of the things you're looking for. And of course, you can always contact us if you just can't find it. We're happy to point these things out for you. All right, we're moving into uh, some uh, market collaboration discussion. We're going to talk a little bit on the technical side, but only enough to show you uh, where it fits into uh, into the world that some of us deal with. Even though there are some tech folks on this line, we won't we won't go down too deep into it. But Don's got some uh, some great things to share with you, and um, and so we'll just get started. Thanks, Jeremy. Over the last five years, we've concentrated in three areas for market expansion and industry collaboration, um, educational standardization updates and interoperability. So um, as we've done that, we have had affiliates and uh, standard organizations that we've worked with as well as um, 
co-sponsored and worked with their activities. So I'd like to just go over that list. Um, in the education section, we've been working with the consumer advocates, the PUCs, PSCs, and leading utilities. These are our liaisons to the public and instrumental um, in providing needs for their communities. Um, along with that general list, we've got some specific organizations, the Continental Automated Buildings Association, um, acronym CABA. They, um, we work with them whenever there's an opportunity to ensure the building's community is aware of Green Button. Um, the next one on the list is, is one that we have spent a whole lot of time with, and that's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, in some ways, I've been associated with them probably for seven years, although this is our fifth year anniversary. Um, the NIST Cooperative Agreement, which is currently um, being used to assist the Public Utility and Service Commissions um, in their desires to make Green Button available to the communities, um, is an active NIST grant that Jeremy's working on. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Dave Woolman and Kun Nguyen, who've been absolutely fantastic supporters of our efforts. Um, next year, through working with Kuhn, um, we've asked the um, Department of Commerce Cybersecurity Group within NIST to take a review of the current SB version 3.3 standard for cybersecurity group compliance. Um, the um, NASB group typically goes through a similar task, but it's done as an audit and the auditor selects the uh, individual um, books. On, they did not select the SB standard. Um, so we reached out to NIST and asked if they would review it. They reviewed the original policy um, when it was published in 2011, but because we've, you'll see in a minute, we've done some upgrades. Um, we wanna make sure that the standard cybersecurity suites, et cetera, um, are really up to date. Um, in addition to that, um, the NIST grants have assisted us over the last five years in various activities. Uh, the one for next year um, will help us upgrade the test platforms to support the retail customer um, schema that I'll describe in a few minutes on the next slide. Um, another group in government that has really helped us is the Ontario Ministry of Energy. Um, they're always on the monthly um, all, all pulse calls that we hold with all of our members. Um, and they keep bringing this up to date as, as you just heard from Matt uh, Edwards. They're very active in Ontario and keep us well informed. Um, the last one on that list is the Smart Energy Consumer Collaborative. Collaborative I'm sorry. Um, unfortunately, they're having their annual meeting this week, so they're not able to join us um, today, but they usually participate, we usually participate with them in their person uh, meetings and spread the word. Under standardization, um, we've got some recognizable uh, areas that we've talked about. Um, we also have several new ones. Um, one that you are probably familiar with is the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, under former President Obama, uh, an executive order had been signed to see that the green button was implemented into the EPA's Energy Star portfolio, which is an online tool for building owners to benchmark their properties. Uh, unfortunately, the EPA only got so far um, as being able to export Green Button data, um, but we have now reconvened with them um, through another group that's um, been involved, I'll mention in just a minute, um, who's looking at um, whether Green Button or the EPA's portfolio management data stream is what they want to use as a standard within their organization. Um, Jeremy and I had a conversation with the EPA just last week. Um, we gave them um, some technical information. They're going back to review it. Our next call should be in November. And in this time, they are gonna give us an update. Um, if anyone's been using it, you know that they have added several new APIs. Um, we've glanced at those. There's some things in it that we wanna add. Um, and I'll go over those in my next slide. 
Um, but we're trying to get it to where Green Button and the EPA portfolio manager become interchangeable. Um, the next group is the Korean Smart Grid Association that was mentioned earlier in a previous si slide. Um, we just had the NASB monthly update call yesterday and I can report um, the Korean translation is ongoing. Unfortunately, it has been um, slowed down uh, again due to the COVID um, pandemic, um, but it is on, on track. It, um, we did not get a report from NASB as to a target date. Uh, perhaps later um, we can get an update from um, them. A new group, though, that we're associated with is this Linux Foundation. Um, it's actually a group within the Linux Foundation called Linux Foundation Energy. Um, most people, um, when you think of the Linux Foundation, you you think of Linux computers um, as an operating system, but they've gone really extremely beyond that. Um, they have invested a lot of time and effort into the open source development. Um, they have this LFE, which is an energy division, uh, attempting to harmonize the disparate systems that span Europe. And um, we got involved thanks to Genghis um, Unirum, our uh, GBA sponsor, NG, who has involved us in it. I participate um, weekly in the um, LFE data architecture um, working group along with uh, other groups. Um, anyone interested in joining that group, um, if you um, Google the Linux Foundation Energy LFE, um, you will find them on the web, and it's a free membership. Um, they are looking for um, open source projects that um, can be used um, to do microgrid work, um, nodal work, um, scale of standard work. So if you have some code you um, would like to contribute in the open source, um, their only requirement is that it must run on a Linux um, server. Um, they will not take it if it's a Windows only, but if you write it in Java, it's transportable to both, both environments. Um, the next group, which I just mentioned briefly, is the North American Energy Standards Board. Um, Elizabeth Mallet and Jonathan Boo have worked very hard um, with myself and with Jeremy to ensure that the uh, green button is successful through the NASB standardization process. Um, despite the historical workflow that NASB requires, which is really a business practice um, workflow for standardization of business um, documents, um, and we don't really fit that because we're an internet um, development data style. Um, they've been very quick to respond to all of the minor and major changes that the Open ADE Task Force um, has submitted. And as a result of that, um, we did a significant um, uplift of the standard. Um, I'll go over a few of those points on my next point, but um, it's been a lot of work. I also want to thank um, Kate Burks, who's been the chair of the um, SB Task Force. Kate's from Big Data Energy, another one of our members. Um, he's helped steer that work group through the NASB um, process. In addition, we've got the National Institute. They're, they're on um, that list as well as the education list. And, and again, um, we mentioned them earlier. Um, then we've got a group that some of you, I suspect, are aware of the um, Open Automated Demand Response, oh, actually probably known better as Open ADR. Um, it's an organization that promotes standard um, for the same trade name that allows utilities to send pricing crit criticality signals down to buildings, homes, devices that uh, allow you to curtail energy usage, um, unconnect, um, during the most recent brown, rolling brownouts in, in California, um, used this capability quite extensively to help customers keep from being blacked out by turning off such things as uh, water uh, heating uh, pools that aren't being used if, if they have those running and so forth. Um, green button actually, the open ADE ADR standard actually does contain 
an element of a green button standard. It has not been updated. It actually goes back um, to a proposed schema prior to the original publication. And we're now working with that group uh, in an effort to get the um, green button element of the open ADR standard upgraded to the version 3.3. Um, and we've gotten to the point where we're starting to do actual data comparisons to let them know um, what yeah, elements yeah. in their standard are out of date and need to be updated. Um, hopefully we can get that uh, finalized sometime next year, uh, but it is an ongoing project. And then an interoperability is the mortgage industry standard maintenance organization. They're trying to select an energy standard um, for their uh, leaseholders. Um, and Renata uh, Bakasiba from the uh, GBA member PG&E PG got us into that. Let me skip over to the um, technical side. Um, the focus area has been the is uh, also been divided into three areas. Um, we focused on security, ease of use, and enhancements to the standard. Um, on the security side, the version 3.3 upgrades the minimum TLS to 1.2. Um, it also has converted from OAuth 1 um, to the OAuth 2 with the most secure authorization code flows. Um, that would be the authorization code, refresh token code, and the client credential. Um, it does not support the uh, resource password or implicit, which are actually being removed from the standard um, in the 2.1 upgrade. The other thing that we have done is we've added both personal identifiable information uh, in addition to the original energy usage, but those are separated into two separate um, sets of APIs and data streams. Um, from an ease of use, we've rewritten the authorization use case in the standard to simplify um, how third parties actually process authorization requests. Um, and we added the ability to um, allow personal identifiable information to be um, authorized in the same single authorization request as energy data. Um, looking at future enhancements, um, we've always had the ability to uh, provide temperature readings, um, but in reviewing that, we I uncovered the fact that you cannot indicate that it's weather. So um, we have not submitted this to NASB yet, but the uh, publicly available energy usage XSD from our open source now contains a weather service, um, which would be a much more reasonable service for temperatures. Um, we are going to be investigating um, adding a second use case. Today, what's defined is I'm going to call an interactive process with the customer. Um, we're going to look at adding a pre-authorized case where a customer can pre-authorize um, a third party access without having to interactively be present. Um, we're also investigating how to support smartphone applications. The current standard does not allow a smartphone. It requires that you have confidential um, servers, but the OAuth standard has actually added the ability to support smartphones. So we'll be adding that capability um, to the NASB standard. Um, in addition to that, um, some of the things that we're coming, we're seeing out of the EPA update indicate whether it's green uh, data sources, being EVs, being uh, solar panels, wind. So we'll be looking at how to better support um, DER generation types and sources. And we've also been asked to, uh, and this has been an ongoing request, but we've now got a serious um, request with somebody who's actually willing to do some design work to indicate how customer billing statements could be um, sent using green button um, as a PDF file. Um, so that's a quick summary of what we're looking at. Obviously, um, the open ADE task force uh, meets right now on a monthly basis. Anyone who has some areas that would like to have us discuss to uh, make changes to, um, feel free to um, contact us. You know, uh, it's listed on the uh, Green Button Alliance website. You can see when the next meeting is, there's a countdown and how to get on it. 
Next, let's go over certification benefits. Um, there are really two currently available. There are three um, types of certification um, that we've been attempting to get done. The original was the download my data. Um, it is for data custodians. Um, it really allows a customer to get energy data in um, the green button standard schema format. Um, customers log on to a portal, download the file, and then are able to um, either review it with a style sheet or can send it off to a third party via email or an uplink or however that third party has asked them to get the data to them. The connect my data um, has the exact same data as download my data. The difference is that instead of a customer having to daily or frequently download it, they authorize a third party to obtain that data when they um, are interested in it, be that monthly, be that weekly, be that daily. Um, and the certification um, that is under design and hasn't been made available yet is for those third parties to become certified as compliant. Um, certification assistance is available from the Alliance. Um, we offer an education one-on-one -on -one videotaping training sessions. We also offer the ability to run pre-certification tests um, before the um, applicant actually uh, goes into a billable certification. Um, sponsors get 10 hours of technical education per year and participating members get two hours. Um, all members, uh, including sponsoring and participating beyond those benefits uh, are able to um, contract for that education at $250 an hour. The um, other thing is that we're a partner with the um, DOE's Data Guard Energy Data Privacy Program. Um, it's a voluntary program that um, requires um, the data is protected in situ as well as in transmission. That protection in transmission is automatically covered by the green button uh, protocols um, if you're using Connect My Data. Um, uploading a file um, into a third party would have to be covered by their data guard compliance. So um, with that, um, I'm going to turn this over um, to Utility API for their Innovator, innovator Showcase. Thanks, Don. Uh, that was great. And there's so much more <laughs> that Don can tell you about some of this stuff. But uh, in, in, of course, respect of time, we have to always keep moving. Uh, we have a showcase here put, uh, put up forward, and uh, we're going to show it to you on the screen here. Uh, so uh, uh, listen in, and hopefully uh, keep, keep yourselves muted during this. Uh, there's an audio piece to this. It's a, a real small video that uh, they wanted to share with you about how, uh, how their interface works. So we'll get right on to that. Hello, my name is Rob Zakum, Sales Director for Utility API. Utility API is a platform which enables energy companies to quickly request and download utility data for their projects. Today, I will be showing you our new data access platform, which we have begun implementing with utilities. The demo today will focus on Fort Collins, a municipal utility company in Colorado. We also have the same platform with Silicon Valley Clean Energy, a CCA in California, which is called Data Hive. Soon, many more. First off, we'd like to congratulate the Green Button Alliance on its five years. You'd be hard pressed to find an organization that believes in the potential of the Green Button Alliance as much as Utility API. We offer the only Green Button Connect My Data in the United States tested by UL and certified by the GBA. We helped write the Green Button Standard. We're on the board of the GBA. We participate in the technical open aid working group. We've watched the GBA's progress over the past five years with a mixture of satisfaction and milestones met and anticipation of the promise of the GBA's future. We're deeply proud that our service unlocks Green Button Connect for over a thousand small businesses in clean energy. The ability to access high quality data quickly and easily helps solar installers transition to online based sales, which is key to the survival in the age of the pandemic. Congratulations to our partners on five years of innovation, and here's to the next five. Today, I will be showing you how to register as a third party with Fort Collins Utility. This platform was designed to enable you to request and download utility account holder interval data for all your Fort Collins energy projects and procurement. 
This platform comes at no cost for energy companies to use. First, I'm going to show you the registration process for becoming a third party. This is required to request and collect utility data from your clients. Next, I'm going to show you a demo on how to request and download utility data once you're registered. In order to register, please visit data.fcgov.utilityapi.com. Scroll down and click on register as a third party. This will pull up the registration form that should only take you a moment to fill out. It will ask you for your name, your email, your company name, company's website, and to create a set of login credentials for yourself. The reason for the login credentials is when you register as a third party with Fort Collins, a utility API account will automatically be created for you so that you have a dashboard. The dashboard serves as a place to not only request data from your clients, but also where to view the data that you've previously collected. Scope of use disclosure, this is what you would be using the data for, such as a solar proposal or an energy storage project. Scope of use terms URL is optional, but this is if you'd like to upload your own terms of service from your company's website. Click register and a utility API account will be automatically created for you. If you are a current utility API user, you can go to your settings in the upper right hand corner. Scroll down to utility registrations and click add a utility registration or connection to register as a third party with four columns. For new users to access your dashboard, you just visit www.utilityapi.com and you can log in. You'll notice once you access your dashboard, there's a big blue button called request data at the top of your screen. And this is really what you want to focus on when talking to a client and you want to get their interval data. When you click on request data, you notice you have your own unique authorization link and this is what you want your client to click on to grant authorization. This can be copied and pasted into an existing email thread. It can be texted to a customer. You can embed it into an iframe and put it on your website if you wish. Or you can simply send out the authorization request through the dashboard itself by typing in the customer's name, their email, pre-selecting Fort Collins, preview data request, and then make sure you click send. When you click send, the customer will get a pre-formatted email, not from us, it'll come from your email that looks just like this. Do you want to point out that in your utility API settings, you can quickly swap out our logo for your own, which you only have to do once. Let's see what this looks like for the customer. Once you click send and they receive this email, they're going to go ahead and click securely share your utility data and then continue to Fort Collins Utilities. From here, we need to do a simple account lookup. If they know their account number, they can click here and type it in. If they don't know their account number, we can do a lookup using either their phone number, email, or the address that they have on file with Fort Collins Utility. For the sake of the demo, I'm going to use a phone number. Here, I enter my phone number and I click look up. Two-factor authentication. We need to verify that this is the actual utility account holder. So we will send a code as a text to their phone. We can give a call with the code or send the code via email. Once the code is received, the utility account holder will type it in and click Submit. Final step in the authorization process is just setting parameters for what data the account holder would like to share with you, whether it's account details, interval data, or both. Do they want to share both historical and ongoing data with you? And do they want to share data for all of their meters or for just specific meters? The utility account holder clicks Authorize, and they're done. They will receive an authorization receipt, which looks just like this. Utility API will also send you an email letting you know that a new authorization was created. At this point, as the energy company, I want to go back to where it says My Dashboard. 
And you'll notice that the newest authorization will always appear at the very top of your dashboard, so you don't have to search for it. We're going to give you certain identifiers so you can pick and choose which meters you actually need the data for. Service agreement ID, account number, billing account number, the address of each meter, and then what tariff that meter is on. From here, you have two choices. You can click on Get Data, Collect Historical Data, and we will begin a historical data collection. Alternatively, if you want data moving forward, you can click Get Data, Start Ongoing Monitoring, and then please select the frequency at which you'd like to schedule our software to pull their data moving forward, whether it's every month, every week, or even every day. I do also want to point out that we have our API documentation publicly available. Uh, this is for companies that want to get a bit more technical on the back end, perhaps do an integration with their own CRM like Salesforce or to push the data into their own uh, software platform that they've built themselves. Uh, we offer a standards compliant green button for those who are familiar with how that works. And the documentation is publicly available at www.utilityapi.com docs. And that's it. Now you know how to register as a third party with Fort Collins and how to request and download customer utility data. Again, this platform is 100% free for you to use. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach out to support at utilityapi.com. Thank you. Have a great day. I appreciate that. That was great. And um, uh, Utility API has been uh, with us for a very long time and been on the board for quite a long time. And uh, uh, with, uh, with Daniel Ressler being the representative there and serving as the, as the vice chair right for us. And it's been great. Um, I loved the, the fact that the demo had all these Star Wars characters as their, uh, as the, the sample uh, <laughs> emails and such. That was fantastic, Daniel. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, Oliver Davis, the CEO of Buildy, uh, Simuat uh, and Buildy is uh, a GBA participating member and um, we're going to uh, hear a little bit of what they have to share with us on, on their platform. Hi, my name is Oliver Davis. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Simuat. We're the developers of Buildy, software as a service platform for commercial, industrial, and multifamily buildings to identify opportunities uh, collect information, act, analyze, and track information related to energy efficiency and electrification measures uh, in the CNI and multifamily space. We really appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here today. And more importantly, wanted to congratulate GBA on its five-year anniversary. Uh, we're excited to be a member of GBA uh, today and moving forward. So who we are. So we have been around for a little bit. Uh, the company is over three and a half years old. Uh, we spun out of a previous company that had developed a lot of uh, early technology and on-site energy assessments with the National Renewable Energy Lab. And today we have some of the greatest partners and customers in the market, including uh, New York City's Department of Energy Management and fueled with uh, work that we do with the CUNY's Building Performance Lab. Uh, we work closely with some of the some great utilities across the country, including LADWP and DTE. And we're part of the 2030 district in um, New York City, Ann Arbor, Detroit, and expanding uh, actively as we speak. The platform we have is, has over a billion square feet of real estate, of utility data and asset data. Uh, we've been recognized and have had accolades around um, our technology and innovative strategy. We won NREL's IN2 award in the third cohort and are part of uh, the Urban Future Lab by way of winning the Urban Future Competition Smart City Awards. We really differentiate ourselves as a hub of disparate point solutions in the building energy space. And I'll talk a little bit more about, about what that means. So we have a, what we call a building relationship management platform. And with that, one of the biggest challenges in the market today is that there are all these disparate pieces of data and tools to 
provide data information to owners, utilities, service providers, and others to drive efficiency program. One of the challenges is that this data is disparate and it's distributed across multiple platforms and multiple sources. So with that, we call our platform a building relationship management platform or BRM. So we bring these point solutions and data together, including GBA data um, and others to really improve that engagement from field to front office. So what we do is really speed up the process to uh, engage with that data and connect that to owners. So as we look at how we connect that data across stakeholders in the portfolio, we take measures and incentives from sources like ASHRAE and utility data, take product data from various um, equipment providers and IoT vendors and lighting vendors and mechanical solutions. Uh, we take reporting standards from portfolio manager and ASHRAE, third-party applications, and we connect those all together to serve owners through their utilities and service providers. So with that, we go from portfolio segmentation, uh, we target assessments in the field, and we provide data to, tools to collect data in the field uh, and auto-generate reports to save 90 plus percent of the time it would take to uh, take, get information and act on that information, and ultimately driving capital planning projects and performance tracking. So why we streamline this data is critical. So as an example with Portfolio Manager, we really easy access, ease access to utility data and import that into Buildy for a high fidelity view into your building for potential energy saving projects. And, bench, and we provide benchmarking at the touch of a button as, as a result. This, as an example, the city of Ann Arbor is integrating their entire portfolio uh, to speed up the process for their benchmarking standards and requirements. In addition, with Green Button, Buildy's working with GBA to collaborate with utilities and facilitate the rapid integration and analysis of energy and water data. So we ease, that ac ease access to uh, improve the accuracy of energy consumption data, which is essential for building managers to understand and manage energy usage, drive programs, uh, meet mandates, and report on energy consumption. So we're working with GBA closely to minimize that barrier to access energy consumption data, which really will enable stakeholders to drive programs. So where we're going is we are continue to partner with more and more data sources, more and more um, vendors and products to simplify that uh, connection between owners and information. And uh, again, we've got a great start going um, for the company and are just thrilled to be part of the GBA. And uh, thanks so much. Okay, fantastic. Um, that's excellent. And I know Oliver couldn't join us today. They've got fires running through over there. Um, ben Levine is with us from Buildy. Uh, ben, thank you so much for your participation in the Alliance and for joining us and becoming such active members. It's, uh, it's really quite, quite wonderful to have. Um, I think I want to really uh, highlight the fact that this is a five-year recognition. I thought Chairman's Award would be warranted here to acknowledge individuals uh, or an organization who have made a significant contribution to Green Button past years. I think this is something that we'll do on an annual basis. We'll pr probably solicit input from everybody. But this year being a, uh, a five-year, and I, if, you're, if everybody's okay with it, I took the onus to, uh, to uh, nominate and select, uh, uh, you know, basically the award winner for this year. I'd like to acknowledge three people. So this goes to the uh, Green Button staff. Um, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge Jeremy for his efforts on the really the business focus, the whole area of uh, finances, reporting, his business relationship that he does. And he's such a calm character. I'm telling you, <laughs> No matter how much fire and how much frustration, you just see that, as you can see now, he smiles. Right? He's, uh, he's just, he brings this uh, calmness and we're very fortunate to have him as an executive director uh, for, for, for us and, and moving forward. So um, I really wanted to thank uh, Jeremy for the governance and leadership. Don, I, mean, I don't think I have to say too much. I think a lot of people know 
your subject matter expertise, even though you're Atlanta uh, Braves fan, I won't hold that against you being, you know, the Blue Jay country here. Uh, we always have to juggle around his schedule, but uh, it's always been worthwhile. Um, you'll know that Don does not cut corners. He tells it like it is. Uh, so if you get certified, you really get certified, okay? Like there's no difference, there's no middle ground with Don as far as uh, passing anything. And the other person is Valdez. Valdez is uh, someone who, if you ever call, make sure you have half an hour on your time to, to finish that conversation. So he's very passionate, uh, very uh, gives her heart and soul and dedicated. And, and, uh, and I think she, every time I'm just, if you want to fix uh, a pep talk, just call Valdez. I mean, I think she's, uh, she's so positive and, and creative and, and always, um, and all GBA staff, uh, I know um, it's limited time and what we can do, uh, give you funding wise, but they do put a lot of extra time and effort into it. And so um, it will be an award. It, it won't be with all the, uh, uh, with so many, I wanna thank Zoran from our side. He's our creative uh, brains behind this uh, tree here uh, to give you a knowledge of the fact that uh, what you've made happen uh, don't worry, the, the, we'll give you three separate awards. It won't be a, a one award, but, uh, and a, to a, a token gift as, as on behalf of GBA. So if I can get everybody to applause here for... Anyways. Thanks, everyone. So, so I had to pull this one off just so you're aware that, uh, that uh, um, it's sort of be a surprise uh, to, uh, to the individuals. So hopefully I, I, I got you there, Jeremy and Valdez. You, we are so, I'm stunned. <laughs> and, uh, How did you pull this off without us? We're, we're the ones running everything here behind the scenes. And we did as not I said, know. you, you gave you. me control, right? You made me co-host. That's, That's why. Yeah. Co that was my mistake right there. <laughs> I'm learning slowly though. All right, and Don, thank you again for, for that again, so. Thank, thank you, for Thank you. Very it's, it's absolutely our pleasure. We absolutely love working with everyone at the Green Button Alliance. We love all of our 40 members growing every day. We get so many requests in every day. We love handling all of them, answering questions from everywhere. We just love all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, look ahead. I think next year is uh, for us, we're looking for active participation. It really, our success depends on it. Like as, as how we move forward, we need to uh, grow the membership. Uh, we really need to secondly evolve the standard and as Don mentioned on the DER side and directory services increase certification. Uh, I think we probably could add a point here based on today's discussion. We've always talked about onboarding and making it a simpler process to get uh, get connected and, and move from place to place. So it's anything we can do to help evolve the standard and GBA offerings. Lastly, uh, the area is, um, is around the outreach and uh, the influence that we have to do. I think we need to do more case studies and the examples of the ones we had today are, are very, uh, is a good start. Focus on commercial industrial customers as a group. We've always talked about that a bit more and we'll try and support the international standard and, and, and the marketing that's associated. So I, that's a look ahead and I'll just spend one, close the loop on what I started uh, just talking about earlier, which is around uh, energy data uh, validation, uh, value creation. Again, um, this again, well, I'll put a uh, shout out to Zoran who takes some of my scribble from last night and said, you know, I'd, I'd like to put an idea together on the energy data value, uh, value creation from an open data concept to better decisions. And on the left-hand side, you can see we're really talking about social housing, social benefit, as I mentioned earlier, assistance programs, we need new business models to help students and what they're doing and, and entrepreneurs talking about electric vehicles, getting access from data, the climate, the climate footprint, I'm just going outside of the circle around the future grid and small business, as you said, COVID and even customer choice for rate plans. On, and you can see, I've seen there's a few meteorites uh, coming in, IOT and uh, trading platforms uh, that we have to factor in. And it's all about trying to make it so that we uh, look at it from a viewpoint of uh, what we need to do from accountability and third party access is one component. As we talked about, it's beyond just the technology piece. It's making sure the quality is there, the accountability, whatever we need to make it easy. 
So I just wanted to end on that note and thank everybody for, for the time uh, that uh, everybody's given uh, for the last five years and even for your time today. And, uh, and uh, we we'll look forward to, uh, to doing that. So again, I'll hand it over to, to Jeremy to, to maybe solicit uh, questions if anybody's got any. The purpose of these um, surveys as well, just here where we use them for our customers. So it's nice to see, you know, in people close to the industry, what they think and, and what our customers and, and where we are. So let me just move to the next question. Looking ahead, what would enable better global adoption of Green Button from your viewpoint? So the two items seem to be, the top two there seem to be the streamlining third party onboarding and utility adoption seem to be the, the main, with some others there as well, okay? Just for interest of time, I'll move to the next one. What GBA program should we provide, provided, uh, offered in 2021? What should we do as a GBA point of view? Have more education sessions, more um, updates on legislation, more networking sessions, or marketing or speaking events and opportunities? And you can choose more than one if you'd like. Yeah, again, interesting. Uh, it seems to be on the education side, which is uh, maybe focusing us to get maybe back onto our webinars and things like that, that we can, uh, this would be useful for us. And also more updates on legislation, maybe Valdez, we can take note of for more communication and networking, especially given COVID-19. I think we need to be uh, more creative, I guess, on our online piece. Okay. And the last question is around um, where do you see uh, on the horizon, as far as technology, what we should be being ready for, cloud-based uh, platforms, energy as a service, real-time data, you know, looking at um, more mandates and global adoption again is there, and a one-stop shop type of thing or marketplace. So anyways, right, that's uh, great. thank you very much. And, uh, and again, stay safe and uh, uh, looking forward to your participation. Thank you.